man. You can get off. She doesn't want to get off my car. She, she drives. If I were her, I'd be super shook by now. I to get off, please. Super dangerous, man. Hi, my name is Rachel. I'm a startup lawyer. My name is Suang. I'm a dispute lawyer from Eugene Touring. So Suang, I love cycling and I love cycling on the roads. Recently along East Coast Road, there was a cyclist that got angry with a driver. So in this video, we're going to react to the clip. And because Suang is supposed to be a criminal lawyer, right? Yes, indeed. I'm going to ask him a couple questions along the way. Let's go. So, in this situation, Swang, a car driver is overtaking the cyclist in a van. The first question I have for you is, do the rules that apply for car drivers apply for cyclists as well? Well, the rules can be found in various statutes, including the Highway Code. And with respect to the Highway Code specifically, some rules apply only to car users and some rules apply only to bicycle riders. So, as a bicycle rider, be very careful and don't assume that whatever rules apply to car users would apply to your benefit. Who's that? Oh. But I went on the side. So, at this stage, Swang, has the lady in yellow committed any crime or civil offense because she's blocking the car from moving? in a pretty busy road. Well, there are several potential transgressions that she may face. One, she may potentially face charges under the Protection from Harassment Act for harassing somebody using acts or using words that are distressing to the car driver. You should try not to block someone's car and maybe just take a picture of the person's car and deal with it later. But let's see what happens next. So she kind of moves away. So the cyclist bangs the lady's car door. There is Rule 37 of the Highway Code that very explicitly states that a cyclist is not permitted to come into contact with the side or the back of a car. Got it. I kind of feel bad for the driver because I think she was going to go to I want to to teach a class. And I would be pretty pissed if someone was standing right in front of me and just refusing. In fact, I think this car driver is really, at this moment, just being the more civil one. Yeah. Controlling her emotions. I've got a quick question. One of the things that the driver did was she took the person's bicycle and she moved it to the side. Is there anything wrong with that? Technically, they may consider her by coming into contact with bicycle, the driver to be liable for trespass to property. But really, this would be a very clear case in my view where the prosecution would exercise its discretion not to charge the driver because it would appear to me that the driver is engaging in something quite reasonable. Okay, let's continue watching. It gets a little bit exciting from here. Wow, this is dramatic. So, the driver starts driving with the cyclist on the car. Well, it's probably wrong for me to say this, but at this point, she. <laughs> but what are the offenses over here, Swan? There are so many that I really can't think and really hear. This is where. Uh, both parties start becoming at fault. Oh. So obviously here, uh, what the cyclist has been doing is aggravating her earlier acts of either harassing, that is committing conduct, or saying words that are distressing and alarming to the driver. Mm. So um, I would say uh, her sentence might be increased because of uh, the subsequent act of her. But the driver really should have just stopped or perhaps just driven to the side of the road and try to disengage with the situation. Mm. Here where she's trying to drive at a fast speed with the cyclist there and perhaps to get a cyclist off, she may very well become liable under section 64 to 66 of the Road Traffic Act whereby the driver herself is starting to engage in rash or reckless acts uh, liable to endanger the safety of the cyclist 
and also to other motorists on the road. So, what happens if these ladies decide to be kind to each other the next day and say, hey, you know, we decided not to press charges against each other. Would that have any impact on their charges? Yes, you might not know that when parties privately settle in with each other and they notify the law enforcement authorities of this, the law enforcement authorities do take private amicable resolution into account in determining, number one, whether or not to even charge somebody with an offence, and number two, even if they set to charge, whether they want to charge for a more serious offence or less serious offence. Interesting. Let's continue watching. Man. You can get off! She doesn't want to get off my car! She, she drives! If I were her, I'd be super shoked by now. I to get off, please. Super dangerous, man. I've got another question for you finally, Soang. It relates to who the lady in yellow was. So she's a lawyer. Does that have any impact on her sentencing or charging process? Because I think some people were saying like, oh, you know, lawyers should be held to a higher standard and therefore should be charged more severely. I haven't yet really seen cases which explicitly say you are a lawyer, you should know the law best mm. and because we put you to a high standard, this is aggravating. So I would say quite likely the rules will apply to her as if she's a non-lawyer. Mm. That being said, her being a lawyer would definitely impact on her fitness and propriety to be called to the bar. So her ability to practice in a law firm might be impacted. Yes. We hope you like this video. If you like it, please like, share and subscribe and we'll see you next time. See you.